Hey guys, Undead Sides here, it's time for Flash Game Time, or it is Flash Game Time. Um, this is The Company Myself, game by Ellie Plunen. Uh, I'm going to start a new game here. Fantastic game, so I'll read through this. If you have a minute, I'd like to tell you a bit about myself. The first thing you need to understand is that I am alone. I've been alone for a pretty long time now, I'm used to it, I'm content. Before I became more or less a hermit, I found that I had two passions in life. One was performing. Even today, when I find that I can't relate to others, I can still stand in front of them and make them laugh or surprise them. The irony is strong enough to taste. It doesn't taste good. In case you're wondering, my second passion was a girl named Catherine, but I'll get to that later. I generally face the same day-to-day -day problems as every other person, except that when every other person gets stuck, they have their friends and associates to back them up. I don't. I know that you don't want to hear me describe my admittedly less than a fascinating lifestyle, so instead I'll describe my day with a much more interesting allegory. I used to find joy in the company of others. Now I only have the company of myself. My attention is stolen by a green square on the other end of the room. I want to be its friend more than anything that I've ever wanted. I decided to use the arrow keys to approach it. We've got a little tutorial here. The square does not react to my approach. Does it notice me? Or is it only pretending not to notice me? Which would be worse? Up close I can see the green square is actually a door. I think that we can be friends anyway. I decided to put spacebar to move to the next room. Spotting a couple of platforms ahead, I decided to use the up and up arrow key to jump over them. Hoik! Nice little tutorial. Take that, platforms. I decide that Mr. Door is a better friend than the, than the platforms. I also note that I can pause the game by pressing P or the escape key. Oh. Now that risk is involved, jumping on platforms doesn't seem as easy to me. Still do it anyway. I start thinking about how awful it would be to fall. Luckily, I know that I can push the R key at any time to restart the level find myself proud of and possibly surprised by my ability to leap over harrowing gaps. Even from back here I can tell that the ledge ahead is too high for me to jump. I begin to wonder what would happen if I pressed the spacebar before I completed a level. And this is what happens when you push spacebar before you've completed a level. You get a little shadow self which you can actually jump on top of and use to gain access to other areas. I feel confused and a bit tingly, but mostly just confused. I briefly attempt to think of something to think. Nothing worthwhile emerges. I haven't talked to anyone lately, but at least I can solve my own problems. So this is like the first time you have to use this. So you want to do is this repeatedly. You can see the top left hand corner shows you how many lives we have and uh, we've got an infinite number of lives right here so we just have to do this repeatedly wait for the characters to do what they do first and then follow them up well that's not good so now I'm gonna have to wait for one of my characters to leap off the ledge to his doom before I can continue this is basically what the problem solving is like in this game company of yourself, nothing other than yourself to solve these problems. Whoa. Remember the, the character at the top jumps as well, otherwise that's going to muck things up somewhat. That's the one that commits suicide. I'll follow this one up, and then he's going to jump and then realise that he shouldn't, and then we can make our way to the exit. Geronimo! I see a wall blocking the path to the exit. I am dissatisfied. The area down below is irritatingly spacious. I think to myself that the best course of action is to pull this lever by pressing the A key. Like so. But then we need to get across the gap. How do we do that? Well, our original character pulls the lever for us. So we wait for him to pull the lever and go through. Any time now, alternate me. There we go. I'm grateful of my above average ability to work alone. <laughs> I notice a strange force field in this room. I become gradually more and more curious. Let's walk towards it. I find myself unable to comprehend the purpose of this force field. 
it doesn't seem to block me at all. Let's see what it does block. If we do this, we'll see that it blocks our character. Which is annoying. It blocks our character, see. So, what we have to do, if I restart, and I come over here, and wait a moment, and then hit the space bar, quickly come over here, pull this lever, then our character's going to fall down there, and complete the level for us. Understanding the force field, I notice that this room's field is greenish instead of pinkish. So what we do, walk to the right, I'm holding down the right arrow key now to keep walking, hit space, and our alternate character, our previous us, can go through that force field. And he'll get to the exit, and we can complete the level. Like so. So that's introduced those things. Staring at this worthlessly large staircase, I reflect on my past struggles. So, we can pass through the red, but we can't pass through here. So we need to send an alternate self up there. So we kind of need to jump, and act as if we're jumping up the staircase. And then get to where the lever would be, around here somewhere. Hit A to pull the lever and then restart. Wait for our alternate character to jump up the stairs because he he's uh, blocked by the red or the pinkish glowing stuff so he can climb up that whereas we just pass right through it and complete the level. Luckily for me no one was watching as I hopped around like a crazy person. Well, all of YouTube was watching whilst you were hopping around like a crazy person, that's beside the point. I search for reasons why I don't desire my companionship now this is a tricky one. What we need to do is fall off the ledge and wait a moment. Then we need to walk across here and when we get to the other side we need to jump. And then we'll restart. Our alternate character is going to land on that pink ledge and we're going to jump on his head. Any moment now. And then he will carry us across to the other side and then as he jumps, we'll uh, jump off him and get to the exit. I found myself unable to leave the question alone. Why can I not be with people? I instantly notice how similar this room looks to the previous one and almost feel cheated until I realise that my previous tactic will not work again. So this time we need to get our alternate version over to the other side. So our alternate version is going to wait for us to jump down, land on our head, and then stand still whilst we cross the room. So I'm going to stand still for a little while. So this is me crossing the room in the future. Then we need to jump off our previous self and walk right a bit and get to the exit. So what we need to do now is get down here in a position so we can catch our previous self. So he lands on our head because he'll fall right through that green thing to his doom. So we're waiting for him or more he's waiting for us to get into position which we are and now we need to carry him across quickly because I'm not sure how long I left maybe so we stand here eventually he'll jump off us and go to the exit level complete easy stuff right? <laughs> right this is awkward it doesn't take long for me to understand that I'm going to need some timing to get through here so what you need to do first one wait second one wait third one wait last one and you can restart now you need to be quick now but it doesn't matter really you've got an infinite number of lives on this level so it doesn't matter how many times you screw up just make sure you get the timing right and you know that when you're going to pull the levers otherwise you're a bit boned but I seem to do that all right I've gotten used to the idea of solving mental problems but I still enjoy a test of my physical abilities here and there I think back to the first day that Catherine and I met. Our paths converged and suddenly we were a team. So, we jump up here. This was before I was reclusive, as I have become today, so I had not learned to truly multitask yet. That talent grew out of simple necessity. So we've made it home. We hit spacebar. We actually control Catherine now, so we have to get both characters to the save. Her approach was quiet, as was my response. The connection was instant and, un and unmistakable. A team. Oh, Isn't that sweet? That oh, looks like my alternate guy has to get to the side right. Mutual. 
Let's hit this lever. Switch to Catherine. Hit this lever. And as we're going down here, hit this lever. The relationship was mutual and perfect. And hit this lever. We'll get our guy in the top hat to the exit. I wasn't ready to let it go. Why did he have to let it go, I wonder? Get Catherine to the exit as well. I'm pretty sure this guy hasn't introduced himself. When we faced a problem, we would solve it together. Today, I find myself solving the same problems alone. We do this kind of thing. Catherine can jump up here. I was underappreciative, plain and simple. Didn't... Jump on her head. Jump on her head. I missed that chat. That dialogue, sorry. Get on her head. Jump on her head. Okay. Maybe she can only jump on our head. He's got a top hat. Looks like. There we go. Level complete. There we go. It was perfect. Everything. It was all perfect. So let's go over here. And get her to jump on our head. Pull this lever. Oop. Wrong character. Right, we shouldn't have done that. I'll do this again. Come over here. She jumps on our head and goes up there. And we just switch back to the guy with the top hat. And he can jump over the this ooh, ledge here. Now she can pull that lever and come down to about here. Now he can pull this lever. I helped her and she helped me. Mutual. And we switch back to her, jump across this gap. Then we can both make it to the exit. In a funky way if I do this. <laughs> next level. I never suspected the end has come so quickly. So we need to get that pink lever there. And if you can see what's going to happen, get her to jump on our top hat. Come down here, pull this lever. Now, to get to the exit, we have to pull this lever. But Catherine is kind of stuck down here. Poor lass. But we don't have much choice. I found myself crushed by guilt. I didn't leave the house for days. But she was gone. And now I find myself alone. I can't handle talking to people anymore. Right, so here, we need to open the gate. Wait for our character to jump up to that little yellow thing there. And pull this lever again. Well, it's not letting us pull it again. Hmm. How do we solve this one? We need to close this... Ah! What happens if we get someone up there? So let's do that. Restart. Can we jump on, on our alternate guy's head there? And that gives us a new spawn point. Internally, I visualise myself, myself saying checkpoint, so we can't restart. So, what do we do now? Pull this again? No. Right, so how do we solve this one? Can we jump up there ourselves? Confused now. We can jump up there ourselves. Okay, we can jump up there ourselves. Ah, right, okay. So all we need to do is now restart our character over there. We'll pull that lever. Ooh, we need to hurry. There we go. The guy's going to pull the lever in a second. Then we make it to the exit. I grudgingly consider how the ability to start over from a different perspective would have been helpful earlier in life. Maybe I could have let Catherine not meet me in the first place. And like this, I continue. Alright, so this is a bit of a crazy one. You have to get your guys across here and then kind of like make a stack of you and you all jump up here which is a bit dodgy so what you do, jump start again jump and jump and start again jump and jump start again and start again a bit more jumping let's make a stack of guys here and then start jumping up them all again
stack of guys is not going well at all. They're all collapsing. My stack of guys is collapsing. Just keep jumping. Keep jumping. We need a stack of guys. There we go. That should make a pretty decent stack of guys. So I'll let them all jump on my top hat now. And we're going to carry them across and hopefully there'll be a guy at the top which can get to the exit. Like so. Is that guy going to stop jumping? Has he stopped jumping? He has. Good. Carry them across the gap. And to the exit. Second guy from the top is the lucky one. He's the guy who made it to the exit. What? Don't leave yet. I have more to say. I really do. Right, so this one's an interesting one. Basically, you hold right and then just kind of hold up and start jumping. Then restart, hold up, start jumping. Restart, hold up, start jumping. Hold up. And just do this repeatedly. And eventually you'll have so many guys go in that one of them will make it across the cap. And this is why you have an infinite number of lives on this bit. Because this is pretty much, I think this is the only way you can do it. And I'm failing to jump right now. None of my guys are actually jumping. There we go. You jumped that time. There we go. One of the guys made it across. Excellent. I've been tasked with psychoanalyzing Jack after his mental breakdown. In general, he recalls his life very accurately. The things he says line up with all, re all of the records. The first problem is that he doesn't seem to remember any of my visits. I've talked with, talked with him once a week for the past eight years, and he always tells me the same things as if we had never met before. He describes himself as a loner, and this makes a whole lot of sense, as he has been kept in solitary confinement for the duration of his stay at the hospital. He always briefly talks about his life, and eventually gets into the story of how he lost a loved one, Catherine. He understands that she has died, and he certainly feels at least somewhat responsible, but he doesn't recall that he murdered her. She was found buried in their backyard in a green package, evidently. It was the only lockbox large enough for use as a coffin that Jack could find. Also of note were the two flowers that he planted next to the makeshift grave. He considers her death to be, to be the reason that he can't talk to people anymore. I suppose that in a way, he is correct. This will be my final report on Jack. I don't find any reason to believe that he will recover from his current state of severe mental illness and he's far too dangerous to himself and others for his release. The end. So it's a short game, when you know what you're doing. It wasn't that short the first time I played. I really like this game. It's, it's kind of like a psychological weirdness going on to it. I'll let the credits roll. You know, it's a nice idea how you've got you the company of yourself basically and you've got to help yourself by your you know, using yourself, your previous selves or whatever. I like the the kind of force fields you have. That's a cool idea. Adds an extra layer and then you've got the levers and the platforms. It just like builds up to a very complex kind of game takes a while to figure out what you've got to do on each level and that last last level I'm sure most people spend quite a while trying to do different things the shrink leaves and suddenly I don't even have a person to tell my story anymore poor lonely guy so it's a sad story underneath it all I like those kinds of stories where it's like either a twisted story or a sad story or a creepy story I like those kinds of themes so yeah good game kudos to the person who made it or the team that made it and um, I'll see you in the next flash game or in another video whichever you watch first so until then take care guys